Hello, welcome to the course of DVBS2. So today we are going to start with the next chapter that is about DVBS transmission system. So here in this chapter we will discuss about the DVBS, then we will discuss about the different broadcast standard and then about the DVBS transmission system. So let's start discussing about the DVBS transmission system. So here the what is DVBS? So here the DVB is the standard that is defined for the transmission of digital signals over the satellite. So here it was created by the European organization DVB in 1995. So at beginning the DVBS was only used for digital television transmission but due to its simplicity and flexibility, flexibility it is being used to transmit other type of data. So here this technology specifies the process of coding of channel and the modulation of the satellite transmission. So here the next is the DVBS. Uh, DVB has developed different broadcast standards depending upon the transmission channel. So for the terrestrial use, the, it, uh, it developed the DVB-T and DVB-T2 standard. And for the wireless terrestrial system, it used the DVB-H. Then for the cable system, it used the standard that is DVB-C and DVB-C2. And for the satellite transmission, it used the standard DVB-S and DVB-S2. And for the wireless satellite system, it used the DVB-SH standard. So these are the DVB standards. Next is the satellite transmission, DVB-S satellite transmission. So here in this diagram, you can see this is a DVB-S system that transmit a transport stream of 188 byte packet and this uh, 188 byte packets pass through the channel encoder and it is converted into the stream of byte and then this stream of byte is goes through the modulator that is single carrier QPSK and it converts these bytes into stream of QPSK modulated signal and this is further transmitted to the other network. So this is a satellite transmission of DVB-S system. The next is the DVB-S transmission system processing step. So here in this, the DVB-S signal processing steps are like multiplexing and randomization, then read Solomon encoder, then it pass through the outer interleaver, then the co convolution coder, baseband shaping, and then last it pass through the QPSK modulation. So here in DVB-S, when system codes the signal according to MPEG2 standard, then it pass through these processing steps, starting from the multiplexing and randomization to the QPSK modulation. So here this diagram is showing how this signal transmitted. So here you can see that it starts with the video coder, audio coder and data coder. So these are coders uh, select the signals and it passed the signal through the program MUSK and this multiplexer passed this uh, multiple signals to the transport MUG. So here at transport MUGs, this is this particular system is about the MPG2 source coding and multiplexing. Then after uh, the signal is received at the transport MUX, it goes through the MUX adoption and energy dispersal, then uh, pass through the outer coder, then to the convolution interleaver, then it pass through the inner coder, then baseband shaping and then the QPSK modulator. So here uh, this is the chan uh, satellite channel adapter and here then after that the, uh, the signal that is come out of QPSK modulator, it pass to the RF satellite channel. So this is the procedure how these signals are transmitted or how the DVB-S standards are used to transmit these different type of signals over a satellite system. So let's discuss about these one by one. So first one is channel coding. So here to get good performance against error in satellite transmission, the FEC coding is used that is forward error correction coding is used. So here FEC add redundancy in order to do error correction at the receiver. The next is the adoption and spectrum spread. So here the energy dispersion is the randomization of the input signal. So here randomization is done to obtain a spectrum in which the spectral density is equally divided through the bandwidth. So for the randomization, the logic operator XOR is used between the original signal and the binary sequence obtained from the generator. So here in this process, pseudo-random binary sequence is obtained through polynomial generator. The next is read Solomon coding. So here in every DVB standard an external coding is used. So here DVB S and DVB T used an extra coding name as read Solomon coding. So this coding is used because satellite communication and terrestrial communication are more prone to the error. So read Solomon coding is a coding of 204 
188 t is equal to 8 where 16 parity bits are introduced in each transport packet so with this coding the recorder is able to correct up to 8 error bytes in each packet of 204 received bytes The next part is interleaving. So here the packets are interleaved in order to avoid error in consecutive packets. And here an interleaver has twelve registers. So every byte of the packet is pushed into successive registers. And each in register one there will be byte one thirty twenty five, and in register two there would be a two fourteen twenty six. So here the synchronization of bytes are always pushed into register zero. So in this way the packets are interleaved in the DVBS transmission system. The next is the convolution coding. So here the uh, uh, the protection provided by the Reed Solomon coding is not enough to the digital signal. For that's why we use the convolution coding. Convolution code is used on the top of Reed Solomon code, and this makes the signal robust against random error. And this coding will increase the size of the data stream. So the size of the data stream will be controlled by using code rate. So the code rate is the relation between the data rate before the convolution coder and the data rate. after the convolution coder the next is the bandwidth filtering so here after the convolutional coding the signal is filtered bandwidth filtering is used to limit the spectral components and it is also used to avoid the interference between the symbol so this is about the bandwidth filtering the next last part is about qpsk modulation so here qpsk stands for quadrature phase shift king and here this modulation technique is used and this technique make, make it robust enough for the channel so here it is a constant amplitude modulation where the information is in the phase of the carrier and it has a reduced bandwidth so codification is used to immune signal from noise and providing constant amplitude so in satellite signal transmission the signal has to travel through great distance which translate in big attenuation in the signal for that's why here we use the qpsk modulation to reduce the attenuation in the signaling so this is about the dvbs transmission system thank you